So I decided to make my own physics engine. My goal was to create a physics engine that can handle stuff that Unity normally does for you, like rigid bodies. This was definitely a good idea, and I certainly didn't spend weeks on this, so let's get started. Even though this may be one of the stupidest ideas I had, I decided to be logical of how I go about it. So I decided to use the DirectX 11 library as a base for what I'm making. And don't worry, DirectX doesn't do the work for me, it just makes it somewhat possible to pull off. In fact, no, DirectX is stupid. I had to use it in my like first year of uni, and actually in my second year as well. It was genuinely just the worst thing I could have used. The docs are I first made a window that opens when you press this play button. It currently doesn't have anything, but it will home our entire project. The first step of making this physics engine is to render things on the screen. For simplicity, we will start by rendering 2D shapes, and then move on to 3D ones. So according to Wikipedia, I need something called a vertex buffer, which is an OpenGL feature that provides methods for uploading vertex data to the video uh, Okay, cool. I also need an index buffer, whatever that is. After 30 minutes, I had this square rendering on the screen, and um, I'm just realizing how long this project is gonna take. I was able to create more vertices and indices, which was a pain to calculate, I'm gonna be honest. And then I joined them together and had them in the right location to eventually create this cube. So with this in place, I could start making the physics. Um, wait, actually no, I need a camera controller so it will make our life slightly easier to move around later on. Okay, now we can start. So to begin, I created some constant acceleration and velocity, which I incorporated into this particle model class that every object will inherit. Essentially meaning that every object will eventually have all the tools needed to do anything physics related. As for the acceleration and velocity, I basically just copied some equations from Google that apply force to the object over a period of time making it move in one direction. Now this is fine, but it means our cubes are constantly just moving when sometimes we don't want them to. So what I did is created a function that would detect our keyboard input. Now DirectX helped a bit in this to be honest. And then I basically only apply the force um, if we press the button, essentially. So I quickly incorporated thrust as well, which was super similar. Now, before we move further, I decided to add gravity because it's, well, a main part of physics, which basically is just a downward force that will push on our objects. Now, I know that's not what gravity is, but in terms of programming, it's kind of all we need to do to simulate gravity. Now, I could theoretically sit here and make this engine for years, but I don't want to do that and I'm sure you guys don't want to watch that, so instead I'm only going to be adding the features that I personally want to try. So one of those features being collisions. At the moment we have some shapes, but they can just pass through one another. Oh yeah, I also made the sphere render because I thought it would be cool, and to be honest I spent too much time trying to calculate all the vertices and indices for it, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. Anyways, collisions. So unlike in Unity, where you can just add a collider component, we have to decide what type of collisions we want to use. And we'll basically create a sort of collider component, but we have to basically code it all from scratch. So there are different types of collisions. For this project, I'm only going to focus on three main ones. AABB versus AABB, which is a collision that checks if our cubes intersect one another. Sphere vs Sphere Collision, which is, well, in the name, it's spheres colliding with other spheres. And finally, Sphere vs ABB, which is spheres colliding with other cubes. Now, eventually later on, I ended up adding point collisions for spheres and for cubes, but it's not super relevant right now, and it really won't be in the long term. And now we have this entire script. So this collision handler is going to be super similar to the collider component inside of Unity. Essentially, we'll be able to add this component to our objects if we want to, and if we do that then we will specify what type of collision we want it to use, and finally, well, it will use that collision. But you see one thing is, if we try it out right now, our collisions won't work, or at least it will look like it's not working. Technically we are detecting collisions, because I can see this in the debug, but we need something called collision responses. So in real life, if anything collides with something, there will be a response to what happened. For instance, if you throw something on the floor, it can bounce back, or it can just stop moving. So that is collision responses, and we need something similar inside of this project as well. So I ended up adding the collision responses to the same collider handler class, and I basically ended up creating different types of collision responses, but in the end only ended up using two of the main ones. One which will basically stop the object from moving, and this was probably the simplest one to implement. 
and another that allows the object to push the other object at the same speed. Now this is done by calculating the incoming force and adding it to the other object. I did also add this bouncing back one, where the objects basically bounce back from one another, which once again you just calculate the incoming force, but this time you divide it evenly on the objects based on their mass. But it's kind of janky, and I'm just going to leave it there. And with this in place, I was able to start working on rigid bodies. So for this I created a class that will inherit the particle model class that I made earlier, and if you remember the particle model class is inherited by every object meaning that every object in the game will have a rigid body attached to it. Now this class isn't too long, but it can get complicated quickly, so to explain it shortly, it basically utilizes inertia and torque in combination with quaternion calculations to simulate physics rotations. Now, that is a mouthful, and most people won't understand what that means, but basically it means that our cubes can spin and uh, rotate. And since the rigid body is tied in with the particle model, we also have things like gravity and all the other forces I mentioned earlier. Now at this point we basically had a super solid foundation, we can render stuff, they have physics, and we can program them to do whatever we like. So before ending this video I decided to implement a few more things. I created a particle system basically that will create particles and destroy them after the lifetime is over. It's super similar to the Unity one, just less convoluted and complicated. And basically, those particles also inherit the rigid body class, meaning that they have all of the physics-based stuff that we made previously. I also, as a final thing, wanted to see if I can create buoyancy. I don't really know why, but it means we have this bobbing ball thing, um, which is kind of cool, I guess. Okay, cool, so I have a physics engine, and, well, it's alright. But if you want to change or add anything, you have to hard code it, which is kind of inconvenient. Even so, I now have this, and I'm never going to use it again, so please subscribe.